time is it? Oh, oh, it's carbonara o'clock. Tonight we're making carbonara. If you guys don't know what carbonara is, it is a Roman pasta dish, obviously from Rome in Italy, and it is made with bacon, egg, and cheese. I mean, come on. You just name a better group of ingredients. When I went to Italy, I, I say I studied abroad and I studied cuisine because all I did was eat food, ask questions, and learn about cooking and eating and eating and eating and drinking and drinking. And through all of my experience, I am very confident in my taste for Italian cuisine. More specifically, I'm very confident in my taste for Roman dishes, Southern Italy kinds of dishes. So I was in Positano and they have a very different style than in Rome. And I also am confident in my taste for Tuscan dishes. Before we get started, I wanna talk about carbonara. I mean, yeah, it's amazing and tastes great. But there are some things that I think you guys need to know. You do not use cream, okay? If you have cream, if you went grocery shopping and you bought cream, I'm so sorry, but you don't need it. Go make some whipped cream and then eat it because that's a great use for heavy cream. Do not use it in this dish, okay? Second thing I wanna tell you is that the traditional way to make carbonara incorporates a Pecorino Romano. And the reason it incorporates a Pecorino Romano cheese, which is a dry, saltier cheese, is because it comes from the Roman region. And also Pecorino is unbelievably tasty. This is the cheese that you use in a cacio e pepe. It's really, it's a hard, dry, salty cheese. It's almost got like a tang to it. And it, it really, it makes your mouth water. Like my mouth, I'm about to drool. A lot of people do use Parmesan cheese in this, which is actually from a region further up north. Wherever you are, if you can only find Parmesan cheese, that's also fine. The great thing about cooking from home is that no one from Rome is gonna barge through your door and just slap you across the face because you're not following the rules. No one's gonna do that. If you have an Italian grandmother, you know, then maybe that will be the case, but at your own risk. Okay, the third thing I want to talk about is you are supposed to use a cured pork in this recipe. More specifically, the traditional pork cut is a guanciale, I think that's how you say it, and it comes from the pork cheek. So it's different than a pancetta or a bacon, which comes from the belly. I don't know what was happening. I went to the store today, everything said uncured bacon, uncured bacon, uncured pancetta. I'm like, Excuse me, what I finally found at my store was a cured pinchetta. Uh, it's pre-diced, which is not preferred because this is gonna shrivel into like tiny, tiny pieces. But hey, it's all I could find. And if this is all you can find, because I imagine this is kind of like what they have at every store, then I'm gonna show you how to use it. And if you do find a really, like a cured piece of pork at your butcher, if you're lucky enough to have a cool butcher near you, then what you're gonna do is cut it into large chunks, so large cubes. I, they don't need to be cubed perfectly. They can have some character, but you want them to get really silky and have it just melt in your mouth. Because these are so small, I'm going to cook them on a little bit of a lower heat than I would cook larger pieces of guanciale or pancetta. That's because I don't want them to shrivel up and die. You know, that's never really what we're going for. So, on that note, let's make carbonara. Um, the traditional pasta is a spaghetti, but you know, my grocery store didn't have spaghetti. What the heck? But it did have linguine fini, which is a very, thin linguine, so a flat, thin noodle. Um, it does remind me of spaghetti, so I'm gonna rock the linguine fini today. I have boiled some water and I have lightly salted it. I put about two teaspoons, and that's just to slightly flavor our pasta and the pasta water. I'm not salting it as much as I normally would because this water is gonna combine in our sauce. The cheese is salty, the pancetta is salty, so just be really careful. My pancetta is cubed so tiny, I don't know how much fat it's gonna cook off, 
So I'm just gonna season this pan with a little bit of fat, a little bit of olive oil. I use extra virgin olive oil and I'm just gonna let it come to a shimmer, you know. So something you wanna make sure you have for your pasta are some tongs. You're gonna use them to toss it in the sauce and to delicately handle your pasta. If you have silicone tongs, even better. And for the pinchetta, I'm just using a wooden spoon. You can use a spatula. There she goes, you hear that sizzle? Each pig is different, so the amount of fat you get is gonna be different than the amount of fat that I get. Um, if your pan is overwhelmingly full of fat, you're gonna wanna remove some of it at the end. But let's take it one step at a time. I love pancetta. Make sure that no edges of the pasta are hitting the pan where it's dry. You wanna make sure they do not burn and they are fully submerged. I've got a bowl here. I've got two eggs about room temp. Just using a fork. I don't like using a whisk because it overly whips them. I also want to note you really want to make sure that there are no egg whites floating around like any pieces of clear gelatinous looking egg. That's an egg white and we don't want it in there. We want smooth buttery looking scrambled eggs. So now I'm going to add my cheese. So some Pecorino Romano and let's mix it in there. Beautiful. And if you want, you can also add some Parmesan. Um, the pecorino is really salty already, so I did not season our eggs. I did season them with a little bit of pepper. So I have readjusted this heat. This heat is the lowest of the low. It's on a one, so really low. Take your tongs, and we're not throwing away this water. We need this pasta water. I'm gonna set aside about a tablespoon of pancetta for topping. And now I've got my pasta. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it right in here with this pancetta fat. Beautiful. We're gonna start to toss it in here. We wanna make sure this pasta is fully coated in that fat. Now I'm turning off the heat. We're gonna add our egg mixture and it is go time. Let's add a little bit of our pasta water with it. I only have these little cups. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this pasta water. Just toss it in that sauce. Your consistency should be glossy, it should be sticky, it should be creamy, and you should not be able to see the cheese at all. I was in Rome and they served pasta right in the skillet to the table and I thought it was so cute but obviously I'm gonna tell you how to plate this. I did one here. You can do it however you'd like. Um, so use a fork. This fork is tiny, preferably a large fork. Um, what is that called again? You know what I'm talking about? A pitchfork. Use a pitchfork. Don't actually do that. And I'm just going to bring this here and start to twirl my pasta. And I'm gonna kind of guide it with the spoon. Bring it to the plate and just slide the fork off. Oh my God. This is so Look, every time I enjoy my food. I've had 
carbonara in Italy. I've had carbonara in New York City. And I will say, this reminds me so much of the carbonara that I had in Italy. It is creamy. The egg, cheese, beautiful, glossy sauce sticks to the noodle. And it is this mouthgasmic experience. The carbonaras that I've had that have fallen flat are too watery and the sauce does not stick to the pasta. And I mean, it still tastes good, but it feels like you have to kind of slurp the sauce. With this carbonara, it feels extremely sticky and creamy, and it, it's just, oh, it's like a custard. Something about it just makes you wanna I do have a tip. It's better to have too little pasta water than too much. When you transfer the pasta from the water to the skillet, it's already bringing some pasta water with it. So before you even add any pasta water, test it out and see how the consistency is and then build on it because you really don't want to water this down. Watered down carbonara is a very sad experience. And finally, if you are a vegetarian, do not feel like you can't make this. Feel free to use mushrooms and just make sure you cook them in some olive oil and have them get really caramelized and crisp before you start this so that that oil is flavored with that earthy mushroom vibe. <laughs> and then you can do the same process that I just showed you. So I hope you enjoyed this carbonara tutorial. If you make it, tag me on Instagram. My account is Dining with Skylar. I know a lot of you love the Cacio e Pepe tutorial, so I hope you love this one just as much, if not more. And um, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Please, I love you, pretty please. Ah! <laughs> and all of my recipes are on withskylar.com. You can get so many recipes of all kinds. <laughs> uh, on that note, I've gotta go eat this carbonara, you guys. I have to go take a photo and then eat it, but still. Oh yeah, oh yeah.